Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here and welcome back to part 3 of the 172nd scale Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1A Build With Me series. In the previous episode, we completed our model to this point. This is now pretty much ready to go for some painting. So join me for episode 3 of the Build With Me Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1. So our Spitfire, the painting instructions come on the back of the box. So as you remember in the first episode, I said, make sure you don't do anything with this. Make sure you keep hold of this because you are going to need it later. As you can see on here, we were given four paints included in the kit. We are going to paint our propeller in black, our undersides in this sky kind of color, and we've got brown and dark green on the tops. I always find it a good idea to start from the lightest color and then work our way to the darkest. It's always easier to paint a dark color over a light color. So I'm sure you can guess we're going to start with the Humbrol 90 sky color. So we need to get that one ready. Make sure, just like in the previous episodes when we've done a bit of painting, that you give your paint pots a good mix that they are ready to go before you start using them. Now, thinning paints. Paints aren't always ready to go from the pot. They may require additional thinning. So a good way to test is just to take a little bit out on your brush and pop it onto the model. If for whatever reason it, it just is too clumpy and you're gonna leave brush marks, adding a drop of water, and it doesn't have to be lots of water, just a small amount of water may be beneficial. So I feel as though it may require a little bit of water. Like I said in the previous episode, because we've got small details on the aircraft now, I'm just gonna be super careful as I handle this. A little pot, it does already have some water in it. And we just need a tiny amount to help our paint flow. Just an ever so small amount. And then all we need to do is brush it onto the model. You can see the paint is being a bit reluctant to stick to the surface of the model. And there could be a couple of reasons for that. So the first reason was something that we tried to combat in the first episode of the series, which was where we washed it. We washed the kit with soapy water to remove any mold release that was on the model. The mold release is a type of oil which is used to help the plastic come out of the mold when it's being manufactured. But I thought that we'd removed the majority of that. Another reason could be that the plastic is just really smooth and the paint doesn't want to stick. So you can see as I brush it on, it doesn't really want to just stay where I leave it. It pulls up a little bit. So we're just going to manage that by carefully encouraging it to go where we want it. The paint is relatively thin. We've added a little bit of water just to help it flow. And I'm, I'm literally just making my brush a little bit wet as we do this. And I'm alternating between the paint pot and water, just a little drop of each, just to make sure that we don't get any brush marks left. What the water's doing is um, increasing the drying time of the paint and over that drying time, it will, will self-level and prevent brush strokes from being visible in the model. But thin coats are better than one thick coat. So I know it looks blotchy, but that will be fixed quite soon after we start applying a second coat or a third coat if it's needed. So the bottom of the aircraft is gonna be painted in this sky color. And that includes the wheel wells here, because the best of my understanding is that the wheel wells on the Spitfire Mark 1s were painted the same color as the underside camouflage. So just make sure you get those the same color. I'm going to carry on with this. I'm going to paint it just the bottoms of the aircraft, and I will be back to see you for a second coat. Whilst I've got the, uh, the paint out, I'm actually going to do the landing gear doors. 
just to save a bit of time. The uh, first layer is currently drying uh, on the underside of the Spitfire. So I'm going to paint the, un the doors here with the landing gear legs attached in the same underside color. Again, they'll probably need a couple of coats as the paint doesn't really want to stick. Could be partially down to the formula of the paint, uh, not wanting to play as such. A way to avoid this in the future, I know we tried washing the kit earlier, but um, you could use an alcohol-based thinner to help the paint settle a bit better, or you could use a spray primer or a primer coat of some description on the model. I normally go for a spray can primer because they dry quite quickly and they're really easy to use. You just spray it onto the aircraft, but that does require masking of previous areas that have been painted, such as the internal cockpit parts, because otherwise they will end up the same color as whatever the primer is. Um, but what the primer paint will do will act as a key uh, between the two layers effectively. So it's like, the plastic, then the primer, the primer sticks to the plastic, and then the next paint layer sticks to the primer. Uh, so that's what a primer is really helpful for. It would have been really helpful in this build, but as you can see, we're just gonna persevere and we are gonna get where we need to go. There we go, so the first layer is uh, pretty much dry. It's not terrible, but it's a bit blotchy. Perhaps a second layer will be enough to finish off this base coat. So I'm just going to run the paint over the previously applied layer just to blend it all in. I'm working in one direction at the moment and I may work in a second direction if I have to do a subsequent coat, uh, which I end up, I think I might end up having to do because it doesn't seem to be quite enough. So we get the pito tube there as well. Don't miss that bit out. Yeah, again, just a little bit of water and paint as well. One drop of each on the brush at the same time. The thinner the paint is, the less likely you are to have brush strokes in your finished surface. And then once again, I'm just going to go over all of the areas which are on the lower side of the model with this second coat, and I will see you when it's dry. So after two coats, it's not quite where I would like it to be. I think a third very thin coat will be needed just to make it a little less blotchy and a little bit more uniform. So just as before, a little bit of water, a little bit of paint, but this can be a very thin layer because uh, we're almost there. We're almost where we want to be. So I worked in one direction on the previous layer. So in this layer, I'm probably going to work uh, along the wing rather than front to back just to prevent the buildup of any brush marks which may have occurred. So we're going to work in that direction there. So I'm going to do that all over the bottom of the aircraft once again, and I will see you once this is dry, ready for the next step. There we go, so layer number three is done and dry, and that's good enough for me. The opacity is pretty good, and there aren't that many brush marks that I can see, so I'm pretty happy with that, and it's time to move on. So the next paint is the top camo. So if we get our box art back, you can see, on the top, we've got two different kinds of camouflage paint. We've got a brown and a green. And I think the simplest thing to do is just to paint the entire top surface in brown. And then when that's dry, go over the green camouflage parts as well. So 29 is our brown. So we're going to get that. And we're going to repeat the process just like before. A little bit of the brown paint. A little bit of water, which I've got in my pot here, just to give it a bit of an extra flow if we need it. This has been thoroughly mixed. And then carefully, we need to be more careful now. We can't be as um, sort of gung-ho as we were on the previous layer because we need to preserve the lower layer to a certain extent. So at the edges of the wings here, we need to be a bit more careful because we want a nice clean edge we don't want it to be running onto the bottom side of the wings. Additionally, when we come down to do our edges here, we want to follow the molded lines, the panel lines along here, nice and gentle. You could, if you were worried you weren't going to get a nice neat edge here, you could use some masking tape, masking tape along there, nice and straight edge, 
for you to do that but I'm going to just apply mine nice and carefully and take my time on the edge there you can see that it's quite thin we're getting that same issue that we had before where it doesn't really want to stick to the plastic I'm inclined to believe that it could be because the formula for these paints has changed ever so slightly over the last couple of years that they're uh, not as happy to stick straight onto the plastic as they were before the color does look a little bit different as well from previous issues of the humbrol paint that I have used the brown looks to be a little bit darker than normal um, but we can carry on and use it obviously when you're modeling you can go out and buy the same colors but from different manufacturers there are there's no issue with that if that's the brand that you like the most you want to use i don't know for example tamia tamia make quite a good range of acrylics feel free to use those vallejo i quite like vallejo paints as well they're really nice to use and there are naturally enamels and lacquers as well which are different kinds of paint which can be used for modeling with no real issues so in time if you're if this is your first model you may find different paints that you like to use more than acrylics or vice versa you might like acrylics more than enamels for example i am going to paint the engine exhaust in this brown color as a base layer just so that it'll act as a as a primer basically for when we come to do them later the front here is just like the edge at the back you want to follow the molded panel line to get a nice straight edge again you could use tape if you wanted to but that's relatively good i'm quite happy with that that looks okay and i'm going to just repeat that on the model make sure when you come around to the back here you try and avoid getting it on the bottom of the horizontal surfaces so just take your time nice and gentle just around the edge like that there we go so this is a little bit more care when applying this paint now and i will see you when i've finished painting up the rest of this yeah so uh first layer is down not particularly impressed with this brown color i have used considerably better but uh, we're just going to repeat the process and get another coat on exactly the same as we did with the earlier sky color on the bottom so just repeat the process a bit of paint a little bit of water and uh, apply it working in possibly a different direction to before again taking care just to make sure we follow the uh, the lines that we've carefully painted on the sides so that we don't have uh, any bleed onto the underside color we've already carefully painted so i'm going to just apply this second coat and once again i will see you at the end to see how it looks and maybe we might need a third one well here we are after the third coat of paint now i did it off screen i just wanted to get it done and it's still not looking great is it i'm starting to get some brush marks and it's still blotchy so i'm not entirely sure what's happened in the uh, humbrol factory i swear some of the older paints that came in different uh, earlier gift sets were a bit better i think i'm going to need to do one more layer of this paint um but it's get it's getting on a bit thick now but it's it's thick but it hasn't got the opacity which is strange um but yeah so we're going to carry on i'm going to do one more coat of this paint and then i'm going to call it a day there it is strange because um other brands um would have probably been one or two coats of this brown max but now i'm on the third one and soon to be the fourth one so i'm going to whack one more layer of paint onto this and then we're going to move on to the green no matter what i'm hoping because there's already so much paint on here now the green should go on in like one layer we'll only need to do one coat of green so fingers crossed for that i guess so i'll see you after the fourth coat there we go number four going on still doesn't look 100 percent does it like in some areas it's really good and in other areas it's, it's not good at all yeah i think we're just gonna have to call it a day after number four and uh, move on with our lives to the green part of the camouflage 
So with the ground now at four layers and looking a little bit questionable, but um, we're going to move on. It is time to put on our green and the green goes on in a camouflage pattern as shown here. All I'm going to do is freehand this. I'm not going to do any masking or writing on here. I'm just going to get my paint. There's a little bit of water in my pot again in case I need it just to add a little bit of extra liquid to the green. The green doesn't look too bad. Same brush as before. This is still the same brush that came in the set. I did use my thinner brush um, for smaller parts earlier, but this one will do for now. And uh, all I'm going to do is follow the painting instructions on here. Just taking my time nice and carefully. So we start off on this wing tip up here. We've got green coming up to there. Yeah, so this will need one coat of green. And then it starts about there and it comes down over to there and it goes all the way to about there. So this isn't an exact science, it's just doing my best. So naturally you could mask this if you wanted to, you could go and get some tape or some liquid masking fluids if you thought that would help. And you could draw on beforehand in a pencil where the green was going to go but i'm quite happy to just do it like this so i'm going to crack on with this there we go so we're coming up to the end of applying this first coat of paint and i don't i'm not going to need to do a second coat because the green has so much better opacity than the uh than the brown did but um it still doesn't look quite right to me the shade looks a bit off can't quite put my finger on it, but the, the shade doesn't look quite right. So, um, yeah, not really too sure, but we're nearly at the end of the camouflage scheme. Just done completely freehand. There we go. And that's it. That is the camouflage scheme done. So let's do a little few extra bits of painting uh, just to get this at a stage where we can finish for the day. So the black, which is number 33, that's the next one we're going to use. This one looked to be moderately okay, but again, it's been mixed in the pot and I have my water to hand and I'm gonna just take a little drop of water again, just to help it along. And this is gonna go onto our propeller at the front, all of the propeller area. But you just need to take care because we don't want to get it on any of the previously painted areas so everything else needs to stay as it was again this paint doesn't really want to stick so I'll just pick up a little bit more maybe it's a bit better when it's thicker but being thick doesn't make it um, dry particularly well without brush marks so we'll just have to manage there we go because uh, black paints being so pigment dense normally you only really need one coat to get a good finish but it would seem that this particular kind of paint is um, not of that particular ilk as it were so very carefully just painting our propeller taking care to avoid the other areas we don't want to get um, I will finish that but whilst I'm here we also want to paint the wheel on the back of the aircraft so very carefully again just get the tire it doesn't matter so much if you do go over because I'm going to use some aluminium paint that I used in the first episode to fill in the middle of the wheel so just get the paint on there this does go on better with um, the paint that was already on there. The engine exhausts as well, we can paint them black as per the instructions. The brown acting as a base layer for us and that's worked out quite well. So just take your time nice and careful. So this is pretty much built as per the instructions with the included paints. I've used a few extra paints to help me along. 
So I'll finish off painting the propeller in a minute. But um, before we move on, we need to also paint our wheels in the black. So it makes sense to paint everything with the same color whilst we put it out. And this, is, they can be just painted all over. I think in the instructions, it just tells you to paint the whole thing black, which is fine. But I will go and turn the um, centers into aluminum color using the aluminum paint a little bit later. So that one's done and I'll do the other one in a minute as well. And I'll see you shortly. Here is the clear canopy part. From previous experience, I know that this needs to be sanded down. It doesn't quite fit as it stands. So we need to remove some material from this side. So I'm gonna get the plane out of the way. I don't wanna get dust all over it. So just take, the, take your sanding stick and remove maybe a millimeter of material from the back end here. The reason I'm doing this now is because I want to paint this before we finish this episode. I want to show you how to paint the canopy. We're not going to install it on the kit. We're just going to paint it ready for installation in the next episode. So with a little bit of persuasion, we're going to test the fit just to make sure that it actually does fit. And we don't have to remove any more material. But yeah, you can see with a little bit of pressure, it does go in. So that is about right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the canopy. To be honest, if you get it to fit like that, you won't even need to glue it. Press fit will be enough. It's quite hard to come off. There we go. So to paint this, we need the green again, because as you can see, it's in a completely green area of the camouflage scheme. So we're going to get the green out and we need to follow the lines on the plastic part. I will probably get a cocktail stick and a bit more sticky tack and stick that to it to make it a little bit easier to handle. There we go. So we can handle it a bit easier without getting fingerprints all over it. So the green is back out, straight out of the pot this time, no thinning it. And then, you know, brace your hands against them, themselves and very carefully, you're using the edge effectively of the, the nib, you're not going point on, you're just following the canopy lines very carefully. Follow them all the way around. If you make a mistake, don't worry, you can remove excess acrylic paint with a cocktail stick if you need to, once it's dry. Very carefully, just following the around. Just to point out, this is the number two brush, which was included in the kit. So even though it's not a particularly fine brush, I am able to get relatively good control with it. It's not the highest quality brush, but it will do the job. Don't forget to do the little mirror at the top as well. Just follow it all the way around. This is probably going to be one of the more challenging steps of the build. The frames on this are relatively large, so it does make it quite easy to follow. Made a small error there, so I'll go back with my cocktail stick in a minute and remove that once it's dry. On There we go, nice and easy. So made a little small error there. I can go back and scrape that off when it's dry. Come on down the other side. There we go. So if you just carry on like that, should get a fairly good result with your canopy. So I made the small error over here and I'm just going to very carefully scrape away that bit of paint that I don't want to be there. I don't think I made a small one there. Just scrape that away and that's it. Everything else looks all right. As mentioned earlier, this is uh, number 11. It's a silver color paint. It wasn't included in the set. It's something I have extra lying around. Just an extra little detail uh, to pick out on the model to make things a little bit more interesting visually. So straight out of the pot, no messing about with thinners this time. The landing gear legs are molded onto the actual doors. So I'm going to just give them a quick coat of this silver color. I'll do both of the legs. If you don't have a silver color, don't worry too much about it. You can just leave them the same color as the landing gear doors are. And then once we've done that, we're going to keep the paint out because there is 
another thing we need to do with it, or I want to do with it at the very least, and that is to do the tail wheel. So you see this bit here, I am under the impression that on the real aircraft, this whole bit here was aluminium. We'll also do the center of the wheel. When I said earlier, don't worry too much about getting that one covered in black, it's because we're gonna go over it now. And around, nice and careful with the brush, not the best brush in the world, but it'll do the job. Try and avoid the black. Just get it in the center of the wheel, that's it. And the very last bit on the plane that we need to do is the tip of the pitot tube, which is the sticky out bit there. Just gonna get the bottom part of that in silver. You're not massively gonna see that on the model, but we might as well do it. And before we put the paint away, the centers of the wheels need doing, the hubs. So uh, they're on these sticks, which makes it easy. You can just sort of hold the brush in one place and then just rotate. Which makes it a little bit easier, I find. Very careful painting. And I'll do fronts and backs. Again, if you haven't got a silver color, don't worry too much about doing this step. You could do this, um, the wheel centers, the same color as the uh, Sky Type S as on the bottom of the model, if you really wanted to, because that would probably be quite an appropriate color to do if you wanted some visual interest like that. Before we finish this, there's one final painting step I want to do, and this is kind of optional. Um, this doesn't come in the paint uh, in the kit, but this is a satin paint. This is uh, a clear coat, effectively, um, and this is going to help me with my decal application in the next episode. So what this is, is just another acrylic paint, but it's going to give a satin finish. So it's not 100% gloss, but it's sort of in between uh, a matte finish like we have on the model here and a gloss finish which makes it really shiny so we're going to take some of that and a little bit of water because i don't want too much and i'm going to brush it over the majority of the aircraft i'm not going to brush it over the propeller i'm going to ignore the propeller i'm just going to brush it over the areas where the transfers are going really so that's the main sort of body area the wings the fuselage etc and the reason why I'm doing this is because a smooth, glossy finish, not only does it give a uniform finish to the entire aircraft, it will create a uniform layer for the transfers to go to. Transfers or decals like a nice, smooth surface to stick to. And the shinier a surface is, the smoother, generally, it will be. So the transfers, when they stick down, they should avoid what's called silvering, which is little bubbles underneath causing the transfer film to go all silvery and shiny, which we don't want when we apply our transfers. So this is going to hopefully prevent that when we come to do transfers in the next episode. If you have a gloss spray or something like that, that would be suitable as well. Basically, all we're doing is preparing the surface to receive transfers. If you don't have a gloss or a satin paint, and you just want to ignore this step and jump straight on to doing your transfers, that's fine, that's completely up to you. Just be prepared that you might get some silvering on your transfer film when they get put down. I will, in the next episode, when the transfers are in place, go back over the top in a matte varnish to dull this shine down, because I don't want the Spitfire to be too shiny when it's finished. So there we go, by now, your model should look something like this, and you can see that the uh, satin finish has made it look a little bit more wet. I know it still is a little bit wet, but it has a sort of shine to it, which is really nice. So that is it for now. That is the end of this episode. At this point, you should still have your wheels, your landing gear legs, your landing light, your canopy not attached to the model. In the next episode, we are going to be putting the transfers or decals onto the model. So make sure that you are subscribed with notifications on so that you don't miss when that one comes out. As always, quick shout out to my channel members and patrons. Massive thanks to these guys on screen for the support they give my channel. If you'd like to join them, take a look at the links in the description. 
If you enjoyed this one, dropping a like would be greatly appreciated. And if you're new here, subscribing with notifications on will mean you never miss a modeling upload. Finally, all that's left to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.